I'm not just skinny. I'm skinny, svelte, and pretty. Yeah, I mean, I think to be American size, you somewhat got to eat like American food, man. Man, I see that chubby Asian dude over there, man. No way he ain't had a good burger before. <laughs> A new study shows that overweight Asians are seen as more American than skinny Asians in America. Man, David, we got to talk about this. Yeah, we got to talk about this scientific study that's going viral right now. It's called Unexpected Gains. Being overweight buffers Asian Americans from prejudice against foreigners. They said that this wow. dynamic, Andrew, is not true for any other group of people, white, black, or Latino, but it is true that essentially overweight Asians get more put in the American category, whereas like skinny, skinny Asians get put in the foreigner category. Mm, and by overweight, guys, we don't only mean like fat and obese we're also talking about stocky thick you know everything in between it's just overweight it's just your bmi body mass index being over a certain point so we're going to get into some of the reactions our takeaways as well as our own personal experiences andrew because growing up you were considered more skinny and i was considered more stocky yeah so please hit that like button check out other episodes of the hot pop boys uh david real quick do you see the logic in this, I guess? Is there logic? You know, this is interesting. This is something I have thought a little bit about, but obviously I did not go to the point where it's like I did this whole scientific study about it. But um, yeah, I mean, if you look at Psy, you know, kind of jovial, playful, big, like beef, dairy eaters like Psy, they still have bigger hits than BTS at the end of the day, and it's certainly way more than G-Dragon in America. Yeah, and I think especially, like, I mean, you can boil it down to Americans respecting masculinity more. If you're thicker, bigger, even fatter, that can be seen as more masculine. You're Our just a Viking bigger... Viking tradition yeah, you're of big... being conquerors and axe-wielding Vikings. Think about it, man. You can't get all fat like that, eating little bits of soupy rice and fish. Right. And dried fish flakes. Also, <laughs> anecdotally, Andrew, there's that new Korean actress from... Uh, cocaine bear for example like she probably wouldn't be accepted as a like gorgeous gorgeous sexy sexy actor in asia but is certainly accepted in america so it goes to show you andrew america in a most broad stroke sense andrew thick boys asia skinny boys yeah yeah well let's get into the comments someone said yeah i would perceive bigger asians as more american because there's no way illegal immigrants would be fat they'd be malnourished from the boat ride over i, I just wouldn't <laughs> perceive them to be like big boys yeah i mean i think when you think of the typical immigrant that's new to america you're thinking of a skinny person now whether it's skinny because of lack of meat for example or lack of like red meat for example or you're just skinny just because that's the culture out right, there. they want to be skinny yeah, right? because that in asia literally the beauty standard is to be skinny and in america the beauty standard they still like skinny guys but there's the other side that they also like thick guys lean guys buff guys rip guys even stocky guys in a lot of communities. You Someone know? said, uh, do you think it's true that it used to be in America how white you are determine how American you are, and nowadays it's how fat you are? That's pretty funny, man. I think that there is something to that because to be American fat, you probably got to eat American food. Yeah, it became the transcendent identity marker. Yeah. Um, somebody said, yeah, I could see this being true because fat Asians, to me, just look like fat Latinos. And this was a comment from a white guy. I mean, I do think there's some truth that... Uh, to the idea that when everybody's super fat, like they tend to look a little bit more like each other. Like, Do I you think it's because the features don't pop as much yeah. when you're bigger, or right? I've seen like fat, like white people smile and their like cheeks go up because their cheeks go into their eyes. So it kind of looks like Asian. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess if Latinos, like when it comes to the Latino side, if they're indigenous, that they are somewhat from a long right. twenty three time ago related to Asians. A little categorize bit. indigenous uh, Latinos yeah, yeah, and yeah, Asians yeah, in yeah. the same category. I would say to another point, Andrew, when people get to the age of about eighty. 80 years old, people a lot of the races start to look the same as well. Oh. I've seen some Asian people look like Martin Scorsese or even like the old man from Up. Ooh. Somebody said, um, yeah, the truth is any identities that are more accepted or more widespread in the West, such as being buff, being overweight, being LGBT will make you seem more American. Yeah, I think that like we like the action heroes here are thick. I think there's things like football and being a firefighter that are very American. Oh, Jackson Hu. Huh, yeah, he's a fob and he has a fob accent, but a lot of people identify his vibe 
That's very yeah. American, He's right? like, yeah, I play football in Arizona. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I do the greedy after a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves me. Like, he's just a lovable guy. First of all, it's his personality. But he's got to be a thick, strong boy to be playing college football. Right. So you're saying that, like, he's clearly doing something that people find so rare yeah. and so American that that is uh, able to transcend the fact that he has, like, broken English. Yeah, and I think that uh, since the stereotype is that a lot of Asian dudes, for example, Asian dudes are skinny and slimmer, but if you're buffer or stockier or thicker, that means you can fit in more with, like, masculine Americans. Uh, yeah, I guess you know just, what I mean? Like, you're stronger, so therefore you can do more of the strong man things. Like, you're going to be able to be seen as a formidable opponent in an arm wrestling match, in a football yeah. match, in a in a... Whatever, if you want to try out for the firefighters, you know, be do the, all these very American things. No, I actually think about it. Uh, when I think about it in my past, there's definitely some personal anecdotes that support this. And we're going to get to those after we get through the comments. Somebody said, yay, fat Asians, I feel seen. We might not be valued in the Asian Asian world, but we can be accepted as American in the American world. Yeah, so you know what? Next time that your auntie or your mom is like, oh, you're getting so fat. Why you get so fat? You just... Be I'm I'm getting American, mom. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, when they come for us, don't you want me to open up the door and represent the family? Um, I think it's really interesting that this comment brought up the fact that the same thing that makes you more accepted amongst the American crowd also gets you somewhat ostracized amongst the Asian Asian crowd. Is that yeah. is that weird? Yeah, uh, I think it's getting better, but yes, obviously if the standard of beauty and the most popular look is to be super slim and lean and skinny in out Asia, there. In Asia, right? Yeah, in Asia. Then, of course, as a bigger Asian, you're not as valued over there immediately as far as, like, looks-wise. So, but now you get to be more excited. I don't know. You know, a what lot— if, What if it was like, man, when I'm over— uh, Yeah, when I am in Asia, I get joked on and treated like a pariah amongst my family gathering. But when I'm in America, I am just one of the boys knocking back a six-pack and old boy Alberto beef sticks. Yeah, I mean, I think to be American size, you somewhat got to eat like American food, man. Because, you you, you know, in America, it's like, man, I see that chubby Asian dude over there, man. No way he ain't had a good burger before. (laughs) He likes a good flank steak. Uh, Somebody said, uh, hey, guys, not to be offensive or anything, but have any fat Asians got hate crimed? Because I think they, like, fit in more. Maybe people are scared of their size. I think this gets into the semantics of it, Andrew, because if you're fat and you're tall, you actually just become massive. And any massive person is a formidable opponent to some extent, right? Yeah, and they're not going to get targeted as much. Obviously, smaller people in general. It's not true necessarily. I mean, I don't. I don't know how fat this guy was, but there was definitely a, a person who got attacked who was like chubby. And so I don't think it's like, it's not a for sure fire thing. But yeah, I think if you're skinny and short, you are maybe going to get like targeted more or be seen as an easier target. I could right? see that because if you're skinny and tall, it's like, oh, well, that guy's like a fashion model. And then if he's skinny and short, it's like, oh, there's just not yeah. enough mass. I can overpower him. Um, some people said, you know, I noticed even the few incidents where there was offensive Asians attacking other people, they were fat. Mm. So who knows? I don't uh, know. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, you know, I have, uh, once I got out of the army, I, I joined law school. And in my law firm, I just made sure I was the buffest, thickest John Cena Asian guy around. And I think that really helped my career break through the bamboo ceiling. But I noticed that a lot of guys, they just don't want to do it. Yeah, I mean, in America, they respect masculinity and size and buffness. And I think you being like a buff, stocky Asian dude, even if you fill out your blazer and stuff, you know, like really well... I think that's still seen as some type of power, even if you're not that tall. But what do you think about people saying, uh, man, that's unfair. Like my skinny white coworker doesn't need to get buff to break hit the ceiling at his job. Why do I need to do that? I refuse. Um, I think that, first of all, I think scrawny people of any color still get picked on by the bigger people in their group. That's just like literally like right, you're saying even <laughs> in a white collar chain. even in a white collar profession where theoretically that physicality doesn't come into play i mean because being a lawyer a lot of brain work i've met a lot of larger white dudes who are bosses 
I'm not saying they got promoted because they're bigger, but maybe them being bigger or you maybe being seen as bigger, you can handle yourself better. You demand more respect. Obviously, if you're an Asian and you already suffer from certain stereotypes, you also being Asian, short and scrawny, it's tough, right? Right, because you're, you're doubling down. Yeah, you're just layering on top of the reasons that people are going to see you as like not powerful what does it mean to be fat enough to be american andrew you did some research on the stats well, because a lot of people we got to understand why is this true i think anecdotally a lot of people are like okay yeah i guess this makes sense but what are the stats listen 40 percent of americans are obese not just fat this is obese 40 percent okay. of americans of all americans this is probably above like but, a 34 35 on the bmi index but obviously not shockingly Asians have the lowest obesity rate out you're of any American. You're saying of any group in America, Asians are the least statistically obese. Yes, 16% are obese. So you're saying if the stereotype is that most Asians are generally leaner or skinnier, then it's and then you're one of the 16%, you're being like more American. I don't know. I mean, that's just how the math breaks down. You know what I mean? Right. You wanted to be American so bad, you joined the rare 16% of your group. To be like us. One of us. One of us. One of us. I'm yeah, moving I mean, on, Andrew. We got to get into our takeaways. Oh, real quick. We got to get into our own personal experience. Because I would say that this is true. That I have witnessed a few times in the streets randomly. Or when we're playing basketball. Sometimes, especially when you were younger, Andrew. People would be more willing to try to pick fights with you on the basketball court. Than they would be with me. Even though you are taller than me. Yeah, I mean, I'm only like an inch and a half or something. Like, not I'm not that much taller you than you. You present as significantly <laughs> yeah, taller. Yeah, but you're way thicker than me and way stronger, way stockier. People look at your calves and are like, you know, I ain't messing with this guy. I can't even knock him down. Look at that stability in his Achilles, you know? And I'm like, yeah, people think that they can knock me down because I'm, I'm leaner, right? Um, growing up, I hated being called skinny because we, we grew up doing a lot of American things, playing a lot of sports. Played we, football. We were around a lot of non-Asians. So I was like, I was considered skinny, even though... For an Asian, I'm not super skinny. I'm lean, and I've, I've, I have a little bit of shape now, but I'm saying, like, I can tell you that I didn't want to be skinny growing up. I hated being called that because also in our town, I was not benefiting from being a skinny Asian guy. It wasn't like... Oh, because there, was, there wasn't a lot of Asians in our town Yeah, either. but there wasn't a bunch of girls that were like, oh, we're looking for a skinny Asian dude. But I guess, do you think the skinny you in 2023 is like, I'm not just skinny. I'm skinny, svelte, and pretty. Uh, I don't know. I think it, everything depends on your reward system and your group. But I think yeah, the way I was fishbowl you're but, in, but right? But the now. fact that I, dude, if you like to do athletic things, you know, being skinny is definitely not usually a a advantage. Unless you're a diver, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to our final takeaways, Andrew. My first one is gimmicks like these visual markers and visual imaging. Ultimately, as much as people hate them, they're real. And uh, I think the bulkier you are, like the more American you you'll get considered, and that can be beneficial in certain instances. However, Andrew, the same thing is true for clothing, right? If I wear a bunch of Ame Leon Doré and, and those New Balances, you know, some Ronnie Feig joints, I'm trying to present myself as an artsy hipster. So it's like, how hard is it to understand that fashion expression concept, but as a body type? Mm -hmm. But I guess it's taboo to talk about Andrew because it's very difficult to change your body type. Yeah, uh, David. The last point is like, what's What's the value in being seen as American? You know, like, I, I do know that obviously we all know a lot of Asians, they get hit with the perpetual foreigner stereotype of like, oh, where are you from? Do you speak English? No, you're just, like, you you're just like weird, man. Like, yeah. like you could say that, um, I guess, you know, for example, white and black people, they, they have their qualms with each other, but they do consider themselves part of the same Western family. Yeah. What, what you're saying, like, sometimes skinny Asians don't even get considered part of that whole family dynamic at all. Yeah, exactly. I mean... I can think of this, like, let's say you're a skinny Asian. You are probably more likely to wear Asian brands, too. Ooh. So, therefore, if you are more inspired by the other skinny celebrities from Asia and you tend to end up looking like them and you wear things like Asian brands that are more fit for the Asian shape, which is skinnier, then you're definitely going to look even more Asian than if you were to dress some other way. So, maybe yeah. it's also like being skinny and being big, it obviously changes the way you perceive clothing and your look overall. Yeah. How motivated do you think people are by just like fitting in with a group? Like we all know guys that grew up with us, Andrew, that grew up in our town that was mostly white and black people, right? So everybody's trying to play, you know, hockey, basketball, football, 
baseball. Everybody's just trying to do these like really American things, right? But I noticed that there were some Asian guys that we grew up with that once they found the Asian Asian crowd in college, they started growing out the J-pop, K-pop hair, looking like a Final Fantasy character, wearing, like you said, you know, Yoji Yamamoto and kind of going into that lane because they find, found, finally found a tribe that like more accepted them. Yeah. No, I mean, people want to fit in. Anyways, guys, we're going to wrap it up right there. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Does it make sense to you? I mean, it kind of does make sense to me, um, but let us know how that makes you feel if you're skinny or if you're a bigger Asian. Uh, do you, are the bigger Asians, are you, are you, is this helpful to you? Like, do you like to hear this? Or you're like, nah, I'm still trying to lose weight or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you let us know in the comments down below. Please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.